This is Jessie from Jessie Marie Knits Stuff here on YouTube, here with episode number two, titled To Be Determined. It's probably going to have something to do with the number of skeins that I have to show you, uh, and the ratio compared to the number of knits I have to show you. It's a little, I don't know, it's a little unbalanced. Um, so, first of all, thank you and welcome to any new and returning viewers. Uh, much appreciated. I am just going to talk about knitting here today. If you're looking for any of my cross stitch videos, I put that up on Wednesday, June 22nd. Today is Friday, June 24th. Now, I mentioned last week that I wanted to record my knitting videos on Thursdays. However, yesterday I had the pleasure of waking up to thunderstorms, which it sounded more sarcastic than I meant it to because I love waking up the, to thunderstorms. Um, I grew up in Michigan and we got some pretty good thunderstorms up there. And here in Virginia, they're kind of they're kind of weak, if I'm honest. Um, it rains, but thunderstorms are kind of rare. So I woke up on yesterday morning to actual lightning and thunder, and it was that was pretty cool. But lightning and thunder are not conducive to recording. Um, it was very dark for most of the day, so that wasn't happening. So here we are today. Um, I have quite a bit to talk about because this is going to be sort of a more regular format. Um, so I'm going to do sort of a Q&A. Um, I, I got lots of comments and questions on my first episode, so thank you for that. And I'm going to sort of go through some of that. I'm going to talk about uh, finishes and what I'm wearing. And uh, this go round, those two things are exactly the same. Hint. Um, <laughs> I am going to talk about my whips. I'm going to talk about recent uh, acquisitions and some dream knitting. And then today I'm going to talk about one of my goals for 2016. And I'm going to sort of include my goals as we go along. So, yeah. So let's get started with everything. Um, so we're going to start with the Q&A. Now I have my last video loaded up on my iPad along with the comments here, so I'm just going to kind of go through them. Uh, let's see. Sadie, yes, you should do a whip parade. Uh, it's not embarrassing because I know sock knitters have lots of socks on the needles. Uh, Wendy Davis asked how long I've been knitting. Um, let me think. I think I started unofficially in 2014. So my knitting journey was like stop start. It was like somebody learning how to drive a stick shift, but like they just weren't getting it. <laughs> um, I sort of just made this all of a sudden decision to learn how to knit. And I went to Michael's or Walmart or something and I picked up some aluminum boy straights and um, a skein of Vanna's Choice, which is like a worsted weight acrylic yarn, and attempted to learn how to knit based on some YouTube videos. And it was rough going. Oh no, my first needles were not the aluminums. They, I got some bamboos. So, because that's what you're supposed to do. If you're going to start learning how to knit, you want to get like a worsted weight yarn that's very affordable and some bamboo needles so that your stitches don't slip all over the place. Um, because they will do that. Um, I struggled in the beginning. I mean, it was, it was rough. Um, I couldn't figure out how to hold the yarn. The problem that I was having is that I was watching an English tutorial. So English style means that you hold your working yarn in your right hand. And this might look a little bit opposite just because of the way that we're facing each other. So you hold the yarn in your white right hand. And then this tutorial taught you how to wrap. I'm left-handed. By and large, I'm left-handed. So I was I, I could manage getting through these tutorials because I'm I have moments where I can be right-handed. Um but I don't think that I should have learned that way. I think that I should have learned 
Continental, where you hold the working yarn in your left hand and pick. It's a much faster version of knitting that now I can't do. Can't do it. Um, because I stuck with this English style, this holding it in the right hand and then wrapping it. It's much slower, it's a lot more body movement than should be necessary, but that's how I knit. So, and sometimes you know you just gotta do what you know how to do. Um, so I attempted just a basic garter stitch scarf, as you do when you're first learning how to knit, and I couldn't figure it out. I mean, I couldn't do this. So then I thought, okay, well maybe I'm one of those weirdos who can purl easier than they can knit. Couldn't purl to save my life. Oh my gosh, it was bad. So I, I gave up. I was like, this is not working for me. I'm not meant to be a knitter. I'm not meant to knit. I'm going to be a cross stitcher and we're just going to call it a day. And this was, I think, like late fall 2014. Early, early to late fall 2014. Well, fortunately, that's very not my personality type. If I want to accomplish something and I can't for like mechanical reasons or something, I, it it stays with me. And it's like, why can't you do this? Like, there are millions of people across the world who knit. There are youngsters, like, age six, seven, that are knitting. Why can't I do this? So I kept at it. And I think ultimately that's why I was able to be successful, because I kept at it. Um, I, I wasn't going to let it defeat me. So I progressed. Ended, what I ended up doing was I bought a higher quality yarn. The, I mean... I'm not I'm not hating on acrylics or anything like that. I got a very very affordable skein of yarn in a very ugly colorway, if I'm honest. I love grays. I mean, this cowl that I'm wearing today, it's a blue gray, but I love I love grays. But I got like drab, very not interesting gray. So, instead I got a skein of Malabrigo Worsted, which is a, um, it's a singles worsted blend, and I knit a, um, a ribbed scarf for my brother. So that got me used to knitting and purling, and I was using a yarn that was just, it just played better with my hands. I think that the acrylic hung, it clinged too much for me. I think that was ultimately a part of my issue is that it's it's just it it holds on and it's like I'm not letting go so you have a hard time getting the stitches to do what you want them to anyway long story short I knit that scarf for my brother um, the colorway I used was Tortuga which is like a it's a dark black but there are some lighter bits thrown in um, because it's hand dyed wool and um, so yeah so I would say that officially, I've been knitting for a year and a half, give or take. Um, I go through these phases where I, I either don't want to knit or all I want to do is knit. So say what you will. Year and a half. Long story short. Okay. Yes, Donna, you do need some more practice. Just keep, just keep practicing. Okay. Now, Christy wants to know if I can point her in the direction of some good beginning tutorials. So, I will be sure to link the tutorial series down below um, of the ones that I learned from. However, I would suggest that you go to a a local yarn store. Go to a place where the experts lie, <laughs> like where they hang out, because they can show you and they can correct your form and they can, I mean, they can teach you and they almost always have like beginner knitter classes. 
it's, I know it's a little intimidating because you're like, okay, I don't know how to do any of this and I'm gonna go ask this expert like the basics of what does worsted weight mean, you know? So, but I, they're a wealth of knowledge and they'll be willing to teach you. Knitters, I think, are like, yes, let me share my knowledge with you. Hand dyers of yarn, totally different story. They don't want to share their secrets. But um, knitters want to share their, their techniques and their advice. So that would be my best suggestion. But I will link my tutorial videos that I used down below. They are pretty solid. Um, they teach you the basics. Cast on, knits, purls, bind off, that kind of a thing. Um, there's also a couple of channels that I follow, so if there's a stitch that I'm doing that I've never done before, or, oh my gosh, I dropped a stitch six rows down in lace, how do I pick this thing up? Um, how do I save my project? Very Pink Knits and New Stitch a Day are two other resources that I, that I use a lot. Uh, and so I'll be sure to link their channels down below as well. Okay, let's see what else have we got. Wow, that's cool. Uh, Gidley's Cottage is spending the next 12 months knitting dog blankets for a dog rescue. That's very cool. Okay, uh, Button Addict asked if I've watched, um, Colorful Creative Podcast. Um, she said that she nicknamed her doodler the doodler of doom. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, I haven't seen that podcast, no, but I will. I will definitely look it up. Uh, she also said that she has tension issues, so her knitting is wonky. That's exactly what my issue was at the beginning. You just have to stick with it if you want to. Uh, let's see. Thank you, Kristen, for the uh, wedding congratulations. I do appreciate that. Yay, novice stitcher. She's a shawl addict as well. That's cool. Okay. Buddy Mom Julie asked a few questions. Uh, let's see. She wants to know about the loopy you. Um, the Loopy U is a, it's a yarn, it's a yarn shop based in Denver, Colorado. Um, and they are, they have a very large internet presence. Um, they host a lot of knit-alongs throughout the year. Um, so I'll be sure to link it down below. Um, it's one of my favorite places to shop. They do sell some yarns there that you can't get much anywhere else, specifically Volvisa and um, Hedgehog Fibers. Um, and I know they just started carrying some Canon hand dyes, which I haven't gotten a hold of yet, but I want to. Um, they're pretty fabulous. Um, they also send you goodies when you order from them, like candy and hand-drawn things. They have a mascot named Loopy, and he's a sheep of course. And um, so he's like posing in different ways. It's very cute. I love that shop. Um, they are super fast, excuse me, with, sh with uh, shipping and whatnot. And um, they also have their own sort of rewards program. So I think for every 250 points you earn, which $1 equals one point. So every $250 you spend with them, you get a $25 reward credit. On top of that, they have periodic other bonuses, um, like just little notions and whatnot that they just send to you. Very cool. Um, if you're referring to Camp Loopy, um, I would spend some time on their website and look at Camp Loopy because that is, um, that's a blast. Um, I am so excited about Camp Loopy this year because I think I might actually be successful with it. And uh, she asked about the Molly Ringwald yarn. 
that is, it's not a Loopy You exclusive. That's Madeline Tosh. Um, so I hope that I just make that, that clear. Madeline Tosh is a yarn dyer, and they have the yarn they've nicknamed Molly Ringwald. Or not nicknamed, but named Molly Ringwald because it's just the pinks. So there we have it. Thanks everybody for all of your comments and questions. I do so very greatly appreciate it. Um, if you have any others, feel free to leave them below or send me a private message on YouTube and I'll be happy to answer them. All right, I'm gonna steal a quick sip of coffee. Okay, so let's talk about uh, recent finishes and this go round, um, also what I'm wearing at the same time. My most recent finish, I think, I'm pretty sure I went through my, uh, through all of my hand knits, is this cowl right here. And so I'm going to stand it up tall and talk through it. That's kind of a really weird look. I can see through the lace. Okay, so I'm going to bring that back down. So this is my Grey Haven cowl. And this is a design by... Uh, let me see, I have my project page here, uh, by Robin Ulrich. I knit this on US size 7 needles, and I used almost two full skeins of Madeline Tosh, Tosh Vintage, to knit it. Uh, this was for an Eat Sleep Knit Knit Along in May? Was it May? Yes, May. They're May Knit Along. Eight Sleep Knit is another yarn store that I purchase from most regularly. Um, their knit along for May was um, a freestyle, do whatever you want. And they also have this secondary challenge throughout the year, these badges. And one of the badges was to, it's called Walk Like an Estonian, but basically knit something with the Estonian style lace. So this is apparently Estonian style lace. Now my assumption about Estonian lace is that it has these bobbles, so this very textured look to them. This does not have any of that whatsoever. I'm actually going to take it off because it's summertime and this is worsted weight wool, so it's quite warm. So you can see the stitch pattern or the the lace pattern pretty well there. It's it's not it's not very I don't know it's just not what I would have considered Estonian. However, it is tagged Estonian on Ravelry, so it counted, which I think is fabulous because this was a really great pattern to knit. Now, I knit, there's two sizes of it. There's one that's like more close to neck, um, so it's more like a neck warmer than a cowl. Um, I knit the big old slouchy version, and I also knit an extra repeat of the lace because I wanted to use up as much yarn as possible. Uh, the yarn I used is Madeline Tosh, Tosh Vintage, which is 100% uh, Superwash Merino Worsted Weight, and the colorway is Aura, which is pretty blue-gray. And this, uh, the cowl was inspired by the Grey Havens on um, Lord of the Rings. Kind of got a little bit nerdy, and so there's that. The interesting thing about this that I really liked is that you can see the bottom is just a little bit wider than the top of it. So that this part, I mean, it sits nicely on your shoulders or on your neck right here. I love that. So there is my Grey Haven cowl. I'm looking forward to it being winter so that I can actually wear this for longer than 19 minutes. Um, but that is my most recent finish. So yeah, I haven't finished anything since May. Mm. It's so squishy, you guys. And I did block this out because I wanted to make sure that I got it to stop curling. And I think I got most of it out. It still does curl a little bit in one spot, but not a big deal. So there's my Grey Haven. And next week I will have either a different finished object or 
as in like another or I don't know we'll keep going and I'll just show you all of my recent knits okay so let's get to works in progress I've only worked on two things this week one of which you did not see during my whip parade oh my gosh it is so much cooler <laughs> having taken that off that's gonna be a uh, a treasure come uh, winter this year okay so like I said only two things I've worked on this week one of which is my Merwin shawl. This is a design by Jessica K. Larson, aka Goose Bear Knits, on Ravelry. This is a paid for pattern, um, and I am knitting it using uh, Volmiza Blend, which is a sport weight uh, wool cashmere nylon. And this is my first project for Camp Loopy. Theoretically, any moment now I can bind off and submit it, but I'm going to keep going. So, last time we spoke, and I meant to insert a stitch marker so that you could see, but last time I was about here. So, I've knit... Well, it's really dark in here, so it's going to be harder to see. So I was working on the body of the shawl and I had six repeats done and I said that I think I was going to do one more repeat. I ended up doing two more repeats and here's why. I was reading a lot of the notes from previous projects of people talking about how they had 40 grams of yarn left after, after finishing up. Um, seven repeats would have put me at the 50% mark which is what the pattern calls for. But I didn't want to have a ton of leftover yarn. I wanted to use up as much of this yarn as possible. So I went ahead and knit another repeat. And it just means that the shawl is going to be extra big. And yeah. And so now I am working up the border. Let me see if I can find a better way to show you this. Yesterday I knit the first repeat of the border. The border is going to be two repeats. There we go. So you can see that there. The um, We have the thicker, more stockinette triangles there. There's um, a an eyelet triangle around it. And then some smaller stockinette bits. And yeah. The colorway for this yarn um, I don't think I mentioned is the Ahoy colorway. Um, the parameters for this project was 400 yards and I chose lace or look-alike lace but I mean this is this is lace. It is holy and it is so drapey. You know I, I watch a lot of knitting podcasts and they talk about how yarn is drapey and I don't know I feel like a lot of times I don't necessarily know what that means. I know that Natasha Merino Light is considered a pretty drapey yarn, but this is like, I don't know, it's like the definition of drapey to me. I finally get it. So there we have it. That's my Merwin shawl. And I have plans to have this done this weekend. So I should have this as a finished object next week. Uh, weather permitting, I'm going to have it blocked and photographed in time. So, next Thursday you'll be seeing this one way or the other. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and set that. Oh, I wanted to tell you, needles, I'm using uh, Chiaogu Interchangeable Red Lace. These are US size 8 5 millimeter needles. And I've got... I weighed this yesterday. Uh, border repeat number one took 23 grams. I have 32 grams left, so I'm going to have just under 10 grams remaining at the end. So I'm very excited about that. I'm using up just as much as I possibly can. Um, ultimately, that's my goal. That's what I want to do. I want to use my stash. When I first got started knitting, I just knit to the parameters of the project, but then I had like 100 grams of, or not 100, like 40 grams of a skein left, which is silly. 
I don't I don't want to have that much extra so anyway project number two this is one of the cast ons that I was talking about uh, last week this is a mystery knit along and I'm on target how about that um, so this is a mystery and it is um, by Alicia Plummer who is one of my favorite knitwear designers and um, you know that I'm doing her thunderstorm mystery from last year so this year it is called dockside and so it's meant to be like a really laid-back project not high stress not high intensity you just kind of knit and the clues come out every two weeks so you have like a boatload of time to to knit each of these clues so here is where I'm at with both first and second clue done. First clue was the stockinette start there. Second clue here in these eyelets. So this I am knitting out of uh, Malabrigo Rios in the Sandbank colorway. This is a worsted weight yarn. And you can see here I don't have a whole lot left worsted weight goes so fast. So I brought the other two skeins that I have here and I'm committing hand dyed yarn uh, sin. I'm not alternating. I'm just gonna go with it. Um, so this is um, 210 yards 100% superwash merino worsted weight and it's just this gorgeous brown neutral it kind of looks like the dock like the wood on a dock I wanted to knit it in blue because there are some people who are knitting it in like the most beautiful colorways but I am knitting with so much blue and I have so much blue that I wanted to just do something different so sandbank it is and this this uh, yarn is pretty scrumptious it is really, really round, and um, I believe it's an eight ply. It's it's phenomenal. So that is one of the things that I'm working on. I do have one more row. I just have one more pearl back row to get back to the start, but not a big deal. Um, what else can I say about it? Needles. Uh, these are also US size 8, uh, 5mm. These are fixed circulars by Chagu. So yeah, loving that. And we will see what the rest of the pattern brings. I'm really hoping that it gets a little bit, um, a little bit more interesting. Shall we say? So, there we have it. And that's all I've been working on. I haven't touched anything else. Um, no other projects are really calling to me right now. My focus is to get that Marwin shawl done. I need it off the needles. I've got to keep going with Camp Loopy. I really, really want to accomplish Camp Loopy this year. So, so there's that. So let's talk about acquisitions. I have just a little bit of acquisitions here, but I'm going to have to rearrange some skeins. More skeins. There's more. Oh, look, there's another one. Okay, now we're down to the ones that I wanted to talk to you about. <laughs> so. I have uh, my next set from the Loopy. So uh, these are my skeins that I'm going to be using for Camp Loopy, uh, my July project. This is Malabrigo Sock in uh, Violetta Africana. It is 440 yards, Merino Nylon. I believe, I believe there's nylon content in here. It doesn't say on the tag anywhere. 
but it's a sock base, so I would assume so. Um, and it's just like a deep, unrelenting purple color. And I'm going to be using these to knit the Ashton Chalette by D. O'Keefe. The parameters for the July project is it has to use at least 600 yards, and the Ashton Chalette only calls for, I think, 470. So just an average gain of fingering weight. However, there is an addendum to the pattern that is the Ashton Shawl, and it just essentially means more repeats, and it'll be bigger. So I can meet the parameters of Camp Loopy using these beautiful colors. We had to pick something that has been in our Ravelry queues for over a year. So pirate booty, pirate treasure, buried treasure kind of a thing. That's the, that's the idea of it, which is cute. Um, my Ravelry queue is sad at best. It's really not, it's not up to what it should be. I've recently gone through and sort of culled the herd to empty out some things that I liked at one point, but I don't know why I put them in my queue. So anyway, those will be my July project. And so I will get those wound up and cast on on July 1st, so next Friday. Next, I have, um, so the Loopy U is offering something else. In addition to Camp Loopy, you also can participate in, uh, I believe it's the Pirate Club Pack. So for each month of Camp Loopy, if you've signed up, you can get this sort of bonus. And it's an exclusively dyed skein of yarn and a another extra something. So for June, the Pirate Pack included this bag. Camp Loopy 2016. It's a fantastic bag. And I didn't bring the yarn that was month one, but that's okay. And then the bonus for the July project was this. So it has the Camp Loopy logo on it, and I've already used it. Uh, this is a water infuser. It's a fruit infuser. So basically in the blue section you put in your fruit, um, chopped up fruit, like I did apples in mine and it was pretty good. And then you pour water over top of it and you have some fruit infused water, which is pretty cool. That's pretty beneficial, I should think. And then the yarn for this month is, um, it is a Dream in Color Smooshy, which is, um, 100% superwash merino, fingering weight, and the colorway is called Walking the Gangplank. Now, if for whatever reason you are signed up for this, um, for this Pirate Club pack and you haven't received yours yet, and you don't want to be spoiled, don't look. So, this is pretty gorgeous, is it not? I, I love this. I am looking for something to knit this. I don't think socks. But, I mean, I'm not one to, to think socks immediately. So, Dreaming Color is a, um, a yarn dyer that I have grown to very much appreciate. Um, for the last uh, eight months or so, I was participating in the, um, I don't even remember what the what the club was. It was the Dream Club or something. And they had some exclusively dyed skeins that, um, but like across their bases that I've had the chance to try, which I've really enjoyed that. So anyway, this is Pirate Club walking the gangplank. So that's it for recent acquisitions. Not a whole lot. Um, my yarn buying is halted. Um, and the reason for that is that one of my goals for this year is to, I have five yarns on my bucket list this year, and I want to acquire them. And one of them is rather pricey. So I have purchased yarn to participate in Camp Loopy, and I have purchased yarn for, um, to achieve this bucket list. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the 
three that I have and talk about the other two that I don't have just yet. Okay, so goals for 2016 are to acquire, let's see, uh, we'll start with this one. One of them is uh, Berenvola. This is a yarn that is dyed in Germany. This is her barefoot sock base, which is um, 100 grams, 437 yards of extra fine merino and polyamide nylon. This is in her princess colorway, which is the only one that I could get because her updates go so fast. But I was able to snag this guy. And isn't she gorgeous? Oh, I just love the purpley spackles. I'm watching, um, let's see, Stress Knits, Grocery Girls, um, Pin Feathers and Pearls, Inside Number 23. Everybody's talking about all of these socks and their speckles. and So I got bit by the bug and had to get some. So... <laughs> There we have it. This will be socks because it's just, it, it feels like a good sock base. Everybody talks about Benambola being some good for socks. So that will be happening. So that's one of my bucket list. The second off my bucket list, I couldn't believe that I was able to nab this because this is one of her most popular colorways. It's not one of her most popular bases, but nonetheless. So this is Volenvide. Um, and this is Kristen of the Yarngasm podcast. And this is in her Nouveau base, which is 100% superwash. It is a uh, singles yarn. And uh, this is in the Outlander colorway. Oh my god. The depth of color in this just kind of blows my mind a little bit. So we have this hot orange and these beautiful blues some bare bits I can't get over this skein so yeah that's gonna have to become something my husband is not a huge fan of this skein because it's blue and orange and our rivals our in-state rivals uh, the University of Virginia Cavaliers their colors are navy and orange. And uh, so I'm going to have to find something that's going to dilute that in a two-color shawl. So we'll see. I love this. I love Outlander. Um, and yeah, just obsessed. And I'm so glad that I was able to, to nab a skein of Olenvine because I know that her updates go so fast. Um, so, yeah, very excited about that. So that's skein number two in the, uh, in the bucket list. Skein number three, um, let's see, Stacy from Stress Knits, this is your fault because, and I know you're not watching this, but um, I didn't know that I needed this yarn dyer until I've seen it so many times on your channel. So let me grab a sip of coffee because I'm getting the frog. And um, that yarn dyer is Hedgehog Fibers. Now, I told you guys that the Loopy U is one of the few um, online real retailers for Hedgehog Fibers in the United States. Uh, this yarn, I think, is made in Ireland. Okay, so this is their sock base. And that is... Um, 90% superwash merino, so it's a high merino content. 10% nylon, uh, 100 grams, 400 meters, about 437 yards. Oh my god. So Hedgehog Fibers, um, if you aren't aware, is kind of known for their wild speckles. This is Film Noir. You guys, look at those speckles. Oh my god. I 
I just, I, I just don't even have the words. And there's some pinky bits buried. Oh my god, this is beautiful. I haven't taken it out of the skein. I want to because I want to look at all of it, but I won't, I won't do that. This, I don't know. I don't know what this is going to be. It may very well be A Pure Joy by Hoki Locatelli. It may be socks. I don't know. I think, from what I understand, this uh, this base of sock yarn is thinner than the average sock base. Yeah, even looking at it compared to the Barambola, it's a little bit thinner. It's not, like the strands are not as thick. And I think that because I'm so inexperienced as far as sock knitting is concerned, maybe this needs to be a shawl. For now, until I get better and I start understanding the mechanics of sock knitting and can make a sock that fits my foot. So anyway, that is just stunning. This skein I actually got from Eat Sleep Knit because they just started a contract with Hedgehog Fibers. And because I'm in the 10K club, oh, there's a random highlighter yellow spot there. I wonder if that's an accident or if those are meant to be in there. I don't think it's meant to be in there. Whatever. It's cool. Um, Eat Slip Net just got a contract with Hedgehog Fibers and because I'm in the 10k club I had early access and so I grabbed this as fast as I could because I knew that the second they released the information all of this would be gone on Eat Slip Net. And they knew it too. They were placing another order with Hedgehog Fibers before they even announced it. Because most of us 10Kers grabbed up all of it. So there's that. I have another skein of Hedgehog Fibers because I just can't help myself. Um, but I just decided to bring that one for today. Okay, so let's talk last segment about dream knitting. I have um, a couple of things that I'm ready to to cast on and the first of those is my Ashton Shellette for the for Camp Loopy July. I'm ready to get that going. Um, yeah, I'm ready to to get working on that. I, I need some of that deep purple in my life. Secondary to that, I want to knit a pair of socks. I am ready. I have two different kinds of needles for sock knitting, and I didn't bring them. Um, I cast on and started a sock in some Knit Picks tweed, uh, Stroll tweed, which is a sock base with some tweed in it, which is super cute, um, but too boring for my first pair of socks. So I want to knit a crazy yarn with lots of color. This is gonna be my first pair of socks. Uh, this is Sweet Georgia Tough Love Sock, 80% Superwash, 20% Nylon. In there, this is an exclusive colorway for Eat Sleep Knit. Uh, for this year's Yarnathon, it's themed around space. And this is called Intergalactic. So it has just reds, purples, blues, like in their most, most vibrant natures. And then, of course, some naturals. Uh, this was actually my reward for hitting the 10K again this year. So the way that Eat Sleep Knit runs their rewards prog program is by yardage. The more yards you buy, the further on you move on in their yarnathon. I have apparently ordered 10,000 yards. Or no. Yes, 10,000 yards of... Uh, yarn this year. Now they have bonuses and boosters and whatnot, so it's not, I haven't necessarily bought 10,000 yards, but mm, pretty close to. So anyway, this was my reward for reaching that level, and this is going to be my first pair of socks, um, because I did rip out these stroll tweed ones. So there's that. And then the last bit of dream knitting that I have is the Shawl Society. So I joined Helen Stewart's The Shawl Society. Helen Stewart is 
a prolific uh, designer. One of her shawls I was going to wear today, but it needs blocking really badly. Um, so yeah, I joined her shawl society. It is six months, six patterns, exclusive shawls, just for the shawl society. And I jumped on that bandwagon faster than I could, uh, faster than I could say. I'm not going to include a preview of what that's going to look like because I don't want to, um, I don't want to spoil it for anyone. Um, the main picture on the project page on Ravelry is still the cover image. It's not, it's not a preview of what the shawl looks like. So... The first shawl is called the Talisman Shawl, and I think I want to knit it out of this. This is Dream in Color Jelly with Cashmere. So this is a singles base yarn with some cashmere in it. Hey look, it's blue! And this is 70% superwash, 20% cashmere, 10% nylon. This was the January 2016 Dream Club. So I was right, it's the Dream Club. And let me see if I can pull up the name. I can't remember what the name of it was. It might just be January 2016. Yeah, it's, it's just January 2016. And yeah, so I think that this is going to be my talisman shawl. One of the details uh, that I've seen with this shawl look really nice with the singles yarn. So I think that that will be perfect. So that's something else that I'm dream knitting. Uh, the July shawl she just sent out, we just got the sort of yarn requirements, yarn suggestions from Helen um, for shawl number two. So I am looking through my stash to see what I can use for that. So that's that. Oh, there is one more thing. Okay, so rewind back a little bit. Yarn bucket list. Um, two more dyers that I want to get a hold of. Um, one of them is O Loops, and I pre-ordered one of theirs uh, back in early May, and I should be getting that here in a few weeks. So that one is on the docket. The other one is the pricier one, and that is a homespun house. I love Molly's colorways. I love them. They're beautiful. She does some really great Harry Potter inspired colorways that I am so looking forward to getting my hands on. But her yarn is kind of pricey. It's a little expensive. And being that we're a one income household right now, I can't really justify buying that currently. So I am not buying yarn until I achieve that bucket list. And so... There's that. Um, so, other than that, I think that's all I have to talk about. Um, I was going to show you the beginnings of my Cozy Memories blanket, but I'll show that to you next week. Um, and I'll talk about my next goals. Um, I have some very basic, just sort of general idea knitting goals. I don't know if they're necessarily achievable, but we'll see. We'll see. So, anyway, uh, thank you guys once again so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I will see you next week. Okay, bye.